Keith Rupert Murdoch is an Australian-born American billionaire businessman, media tycoon, and investor. Through his company News Corp, he is the owner of hundreds of local, national, and international publishing outlets around the world, including in the UK, in Australia, in the US, book publisher HarperCollins, and the television broadcasting channels, Sky News Australia, and Fox News. He was also the owner of Sky, 21st Century Fox, and the now-defunct News of the World. After his father's death in 1952, Murdoch took over the running of the News, a small Adelaide newspaper owned by his father. In the 1950s and 1960s, Murdoch acquired a number of newspapers in Australia and New Zealand before expanding into the United Kingdom in 1969, taking over the news of the world, followed closely by the Sun. In 1974, Murdoch moved to New York City to expand into the US market, however, he retained interests in Australia and Britain. In 1981, Murdoch bought the Times, his first British broadsheet, and, in 1985, became a naturalized US citizen, giving up his Australian citizenship, to satisfy the legal requirement for US television network ownership, got in 1986, keen to adopt newer electronic publishing technologies, Murdoch consolidated his UK printing operations in London, causing bitter industrial disputes. His holding company News Corporation acquired 20th Century Fox, HarperCollins, and the Wall Street Journal. Murdoch formed the British broadcaster B. Skyby in 1990 and, during the 1990s, expanded into Asian networks and South American television. By 2000, Murdoch's News Corporation owned over 800 companies in more than 50 countries, with a net worth of over $5 billion. In July 2011, Murdoch faced allegations that his companies, including the News of the World, owned by News Corporation, had been regularly hacking the phones of celebrities, royalty, and public citizens. Murdoch faced police and government investigations into bribery and corruption by the British government and FBI investigations in the US on 21 July 2012. Murdoch resigned as a director of News International. Many of Murdoch's papers and television channels have been accused of biased and misleading coverage to support his business interests and political allies, and some have credited his influence with major political developments in the UK, US, and Australia. Chapter 1 early life. Keith Rupert Murdoch was born on the 11th of March 1931 in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, the son of Sir Keith Murdoch and Dame Elizabeth Murdoch. He is of English, Irish, and Scottish ancestry. Murdoch's parents were also born in Melbourne. Keith Murdoch was a war correspondent, and later a regional newspaper magnate owning two newspapers in Adelaide, South Australia, and a radio station in a faraway mining town, and chairman of the powerful Herald and Weekly Times Publishing Company. Later in life, Keith Rupert chose to go by his second name, the first name of his maternal grandfather. Rupert Murdoch had three sisters, Janet Calvert-Jones, Anne Cantor and Helen Handbury. He attended Geelong Grammar School, where he was co-editor of the school's official journal The Corian and editor of the student journal If Revived. He took his school's cricket team to the national junior finals. He worked part-time at the Melbourne Herald, and was groomed by his father to take over the family business. Murdoch studied philosophy, politics and economics at Worcester College, Oxford in England, where he kept a bust of Lenin in his rooms and came to be known as Red Rupert. He was a member of the Oxford University Labour Party, stood for Secretary of the Labour Club and managed Oxford Student Publications Limited, the publishing house of Cherwell. After his father's death from cancer in 1952, his mother Elizabeth did charity work as life governor of the Royal Women's Hospital in Melbourne, and established the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. At the age of 102, she had 74 descendants. Murdoch completed an MA before working as a sub-editor with the Daily Express for two years. Chapter 2 – Activities in Australia and New Zealand Following his father's death, when he was 21, Murdoch returned from Oxford to take charge of what was left of the family business. 
After liquidation of his father's herald stake to pay taxes, what was left was News Limited, which had been established in 1923. Rupert Murdoch turned its Adelaide newspaper, The News, its main asset, into a major success. He began to direct his attention to acquisition and expansion, buying the troubled Sunday Times in Perth, Western Australia, and over the next few years acquiring suburban and provincial newspapers in New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria and the Northern Territory, including the Sydney Afternoon Tabloid, The Daily Mirror. The Economist describes Murdoch as inventing the modern tabloid, as he developed a pattern for his newspapers, increasing sports and scandal coverage and adopting eye-catching headlines. Murdoch's first foray outside Australia involved the purchase of a controlling interest in the New Zealand daily The Dominion. In January 1964, while touring New Zealand with friends in a rented Morris Minor after sailing across the Tasman, Murdoch read of a takeover bid for the Wellington paper by the British-based Canadian newspaper magnate, Lord Thompson of Fleet. On the spur of the moment, he launched a counterbid. A four-way battle for control ensued in which the 32-year-old Murdoch was ultimately successful. Later in 1964, Murdoch launched The Australian, Australia's first national daily newspaper, which was based first in Canberra, and later in Sydney. In 1972, Murdoch acquired the Sydney morning tabloid The Daily Telegraph from Australian media mogul Sir Frank Packer, who later regretted selling it to him. In 1984, Murdoch was appointed Companion of the Order of Australia for Services to Publishing. In 1999, Murdoch significantly expanded his music holdings in Australia by acquiring the controlling share in a leading Australian independent label, Michael Kudinsky's Mushroom Records. He merged that with Festival Records, and the result was Festival Mushroom Records. Both Festival and FMR were managed by Murdoch's son James Murdoch for several years. Chapter 2 Section 1 – Political Activities in Australia Murdoch found a political ally in Sir John McEwen, leader of the Australian Country Party, who was governing in coalition with the larger Menzies Holt Gorton Liberal Party. From the first issue of The Australian, Murdoch began taking McEwen's side in every issue that divided the long-serving coalition partners. It was an issue that threatened to split the coalition government and open the way for the stronger Australian Labour Party to dominate Australian politics. It was the beginning of a long campaign that served McEwen well. After McEwen and Menzies retired, Murdoch threw his growing power behind the Australian Labour Party under the leadership of Gough Whitlam and duly saw it elected on a social platform, that included universal free health care, free education for all Australians to tertiary level, recognition of the People's Republic of China, and public ownership of Australia's oil, gas and mineral resources. Rupert Murdoch's backing of Whitlam turned out to be brief. Murdoch had already started his short-lived National Star newspaper in America, and was seeking to strengthen his political contacts there. Asked about the 2007 Australian federal election at News Corporation's annual general meeting in New York on 19 October 2007, its chairman Rupert Murdoch said, I am not commenting on anything to do with Australian politics. I'm sorry. I always get into trouble when I do that. Pressed as to whether he believed Prime Minister John Howard should continue as Prime Minister, he said, I have nothing further to say. I'm sorry. Read our editorials in the papers. It'll be the journalists who decide that, the editors. In 2009, in response to accusations by Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd that News Limited was running vendettas against him and his government, Murdoch opined that Rudd was oversensitive. Murdoch described Howard's successor, Labour Party Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, as more ambitious to lead the world than to lead Australia and criticised Rudd's expansionary fiscal policies in the wake of the financial crisis of 2007-2008 as unnecessary. Although News Limited's interests are extensive, also including the Daily Telegraph, the Courier Mail and the Adelaide Advertiser, it was suggested by the commentator Mungo McCallum in the Monthly that the anti-Rudd push, if coordinated at all, was almost certainly locally driven as opposed to being directed by Murdoch.
who also took a different position from local editors on such matters as climate change and stimulus packages to combat the financial crisis. Murdoch is a supporter of an Australian republic, having campaigned for such a change during the 1999 referendum. Chapter 3 Activities in the United Kingdom Chapter 3 Section 1 Business Activities in the United Kingdom In 1968, Murdoch entered the British newspaper market with his acquisition of the populist news of the world, followed in 1969 with the purchase of the struggling daily The Sun from IPC. Murdoch turned The Sun into a tabloid format and reduced costs by using the same printing press for both newspapers. On acquiring it, he appointed Albert Larry Lamb as editor and, Lamb recalled later, told him, I want a tearaway paper with lots of tits in it. In 1997 The Sun attracted 10 million daily readers. In 1981, Murdoch acquired the Struggling Times and Sunday Times from Canadian newspaper publisher Lord Thompson of Fleet. Ownership of the Times came to him through his relationship with Lord Thompson, who had grown tired of losing money on it as a result of an extended period of industrial action that stopped publication. In the light of success and expansion at the Sun the owners believed that Murdoch could turn the papers around. Harold Evans, editor of the Sunday Times from 1967, was switched to the Daily Times, though he stayed only a year amid editorial conflict with Murdoch. During the 1980s and early 1990s, Murdoch's publications were generally supportive of Britain's Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. At the end of the Thatcher-slash-Major era, Murdoch switched his support to the Labour Party and its leader, Tony Blair. The closeness of his relationship with Blair and their secret meetings to discuss national policies was to become a political issue in Britain. This later changed, with The Sun, in its English editions, publicly renouncing the ruling Labour government and lending its support to David Cameron's Conservative Party, which soon afterwards formed a coalition government. In Scotland, where the Conservatives had suffered a complete annihilation in 1997, the paper began to endorse the Scottish National Party, which soon after came to form the first ever outright majority in the proportionally elected Scottish Parliament. Former Prime Minister Gordon Brown's official spokesman said in November 2009 that Brown and Murdoch were in regular communication and that there is nothing unusual in the Prime Minister talking to Rupert Murdoch. In 1986, Murdoch introduced electronic production processes to his newspapers in Australia, Britain and the United States. The greater degree of automation led to significant reductions in the number of employees involved in the printing process. In England, the move roused the anger of the print unions, resulting in a long and often violent dispute that played out in Wapping, one of London's Docklands areas, where Murdoch had installed the very latest electronic newspaper purpose-built publishing facility in an old warehouse. The bitter whopping dispute started with the dismissal of 6,000 employees who had gone on strike and resulted in street battles and demonstrations. Many on the political left in Britain alleged the collusion of Margaret Thatcher's Conservative government with Murdoch in the whopping affair, as a way of damaging the British trade union movement. In 1987, the dismissed workers accepted a settlement of £60 million. In 1998, Murdoch made an attempt to buy the football club Manchester United FC, with an offer of £625 million, but this failed. It was the largest amount ever offered for a sports club. It was blocked by the United Kingdom's Competition Commission, which stated that the acquisition would have hurt competition in the broadcast industry and the quality of British football. Murdoch's British-based satellite network, Sky Television, incurred massive losses in its early years of operation. As with many of his other business interests, Sky was heavily subsidized by the profits generated by his other holdings, but convinced rival satellite operator British Satellite Broadcasting to accept a merger on his terms in 1990. The merged company, the Sky B, has dominated the British pay TV market ever since pursuing direct-to-home satellite broadcasting. By 1996, Skyby had more than 3.6 million subscribers, triple the number of cable customers in the UK. Murdoch has a seat on the Strategic Advisory Board of Genie Oil and Gas, 
having jointly investing with Lord Rothschild in a 5.5% stake in the company which conducted shale gas and oil exploration in Colorado, Mongolia, Israel and, controversially, the occupied Golan Heights. In response to print media's decline and the increasing influence of online journalism, during the 2000s, Murdoch proclaimed his support of the micropayments model for obtaining revenue from online news. Although this has been criticized by some. In January 2018, the CMA blocked Murdoch from taking over the remaining 61% of B Sky B he did not already own, over fear of market dominance that could potentialize censorship of the media. His bid for B Sky B was later approved by the CMA as long as he sold Sky News to the Walt Disney Company, who was already set to acquire 21st Century Fox. However, it was Comcast who won control of B Sky B in a blind auction ordered by the CMA. Murdoch ultimately sold his 39% of B Sky B to Comcast. News Corporation has subsidiaries in the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, the Channel Islands, and the Virgin Islands. From 1986, News Corporation's annual tax bill averaged around 7% of its profits. Chapter 3, Section 2 political activities in United Kingdom. In Britain, in the 1980s, Murdoch formed a close alliance with Conservative Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. In February 1981, when Murdoch, already owner of The Sun and the News of the World, sought to buy The Times and The Sunday Times, Thatcher's government let his bid pass without referring it to the Monopolies and Mergers Commission, which was usual practice at the time. Although contact between the two before this point had been explicitly denied in an official history of the Times, documents found in Thatcher's archives in 2012 revealed a secret meeting had taken place a month before in which Murdoch briefed Thatcher on his plans for the paper, such as taking on trade unions. The Sun credited itself with helping her successor John Major to win an unexpected election victory in the 1992 general election, which had been expected to end in a hung parliament or a narrow win for Labour then led by Neil Kinnock. In the general elections of 1997, 2001 and 2005, Murdoch's papers were either neutral or supported Labour under Tony Blair. The Labour Party, from when Tony Blair became leader in 1994, had moved from the centre-left to a more centrist position on many economic issues prior to 1997. Murdoch identifies himself as a libertarian, saying what does libertarian mean? as much individual responsibility as possible, as little government as possible, as few rules as possible. But I'm not saying it should be taken to the absolute limit. In a speech he delivered in New York in 2005, Murdoch claimed that Blair described the BBC coverage of the Hurricane Katrina disaster, which was critical of the Bush administration's response, as full of hatred of America. On 28 June 2006, the BBC reported that Murdoch and News Corporation were considering backing new Conservative leader David Cameron, at the next general election, still up to four years away. In a later interview in July 2006, when he was asked what he thought of the Conservative leader, Murdoch replied not much. In a 2009 blog, it was suggested that in the aftermath of the news of the world phone hacking scandal which might yet have transatlantic implications Murdoch and News Corporation might have decided to back Cameron. Despite this, there had already been a convergence of interests between the two men over the muting of Britain's communications regulator Ofcom. In August 2008, British Conservative leader and future Prime Minister David Cameron accepted free flights to hold private talks and attend private parties with Murdoch on his yacht, the Rose Hearty. Cameron declared in the Commons Register of Interests he accepted a private plane provided by Murdoch's son-in-law, public relations guru Matthew Freud, Cameron did not reveal his talks with Murdoch. The gift of travel in Freud's Gulfstream 4 private jet was valued at around £30,000. Other guests attending the social events included the then EU Trade Commissioner Lord Mandelson, the Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska and co-chairman of NBC Universal Ben Silverman. The Conservatives did not disclose what was discussed at in July 2011, it emerged that Cameron had met key executives of Murdoch's News Corporation a total of 26 times during the 14 months that Cameron had served as Prime Minister up to that point. 
It was also reported that Murdoch had given Cameron a personal guarantee that there would be no risk attached to hiring Andy Coulson, the former editor of News of the World, as the Conservative Party's communication director in 2007. This was in spite of Coulson having resigned as editor over phone hacking by a reporter. Cameron chose to take Murdoch's advice, despite warnings from Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, Lord Ashdown, and The Guardian. Coulson resigned his post in 2011 and was later arrested and questioned on allegations of further criminal activity at the News of the World, specifically the News International phone hacking scandal. As a result of the subsequent trial, Coulson was sentenced to 18 months in jail. In June 2016, the Sun supported vote leave in the United Kingdom European Union membership referendum. Murdoch called the Brexit result wonderful, comparing the decision to withdraw from the EU to a prison break, we're out. Chapter 4, News International Phone Hacking Scandal In July 2011, Murdoch, along with his youngest son James, provided testimony before a British parliamentary committee regarding phone hacking. In the UK, his media empire came under fire, as investigators probed reports of 2011 phone hacking. On 14th of July, 2011, the Culture, Media and Sport Committee of the House of Commons served a summons on Murdoch, his son James, and his former CEO Rebecca Brooks to testify before a committee five days later. After an initial refusal, the Murdochs confirmed they would attend, after the committee issued them a summons to Parliament. The day before the committee, the website of the News Corporation publication The Sun was hacked, and a false story was posted on the front page claiming that Murdoch had died. Murdoch described the day of the committee the most humble day of my life. He argued that since he ran a global business of 53,000 employees and that news of the world was just 1% of this, he was not ultimately responsible for what went on at the tabloid. He added that he had not considered resigning, and that he and the other top executives had been completely unaware of the hacking. On 15 July, Murdoch attended a private meeting in London with the family of Millie Dowler, where he personally apologized for the hacking of their murdered daughter's voicemail by a company he owns. On 16 and 17 July, News International published two full page apologies in many of Britain's national newspapers. The first apology took the form of a letter, signed by Murdoch, in which he said sorry for the serious wrongdoing that occurred. The second was titled Putting Right What's Gone Wrong, and gave more detail about the steps News International was taking to address the public's concerns. In the wake of the allegations, Murdoch accepted the resignations of Rebecca Brooks, head of Murdoch's British operations, and Leigh Hinton, head of Dow Jones who was chairman of Murdoch's British newspaper division when some of the abuses happened. They both deny any knowledge of any wrongdoing under their command. On 27 February 2012, the day after the first issue of The Sun on Sunday was published, Deputy Assistant Commissioner Sue Akers informed the Leveson inquiry that police are investigating a network of corrupt officials as part of their inquiries into phone hacking and police corruption. She said that evidence suggested a culture of illegal payments at the Sun and that these payments allegedly made by the Sun were authorized at a senior level. In testimony on 25 April, Murdoch did not deny the quote attributed to him by his former editor of the Sunday Times, Harold Evans, I give instructions to my editors all round the world, why shouldn't I in London? On 1 May 2012, the culture, Media and Sport Committee issued a report stating that Murdoch was not a fit person to exercise the stewardship of a major international company. On 3 July 2013, the Exaro website and Channel 4 News broke the story of a secret recording. This was recorded by the Sun journalists, and in it Murdoch can be heard telling them that the whole investigation was one big fuss over nothing, and that he, or his successors, would take care of any journalists who went to prison. He said, why are the police behaving in this way? It's the biggest inquiry ever, over next to nothing. Chapter 5, Activities in the United States Murdoch made his first acquisition in the United States in 1973, when he purchased the San Antonio Express News. In 1974, Murdoch moved, 
to New York City, to expand into the US market, however, he retained interests in Australia and Britain. Soon afterwards, he founded Star, a supermarket tabloid, and in 1976, he purchased the New York Post. On 4 September 1985, Murdoch became a naturalized citizen to satisfy the legal requirement that only U.S. citizens were permitted to own U.S. television stations. In March 1984, Marvin Davis sold Mark Rich's interest in 20th Century Fox to Murdoch for $250 million due to Rich's trade deals with Iran, which were sanctioned by the U.S. at the time. Davis later backed out of a deal with Murdoch to purchase John Kludge's Metromedia television stations. Rupert Murdoch bought the stations by himself, without Marvin Davis, and later bought out Davis's remaining stake in Fox for $325 million. The six television stations owned by Metromedia formed the nucleus of the Fox Broadcasting Company, founded on 9 October 1986, which later had great success with programs including The Simpsons and The X-Files. In 1986 Murdoch bought Misty Mountain, a Wallace Neff designed house on Angelo Drive in Beverly Hills. The house was the former residence of Jules C. Stein. Murdoch sold the house to his son James in 2018. In Australia, during 1987, he bought the Herald and Weekly Times Limited, the company that his father had once managed. Rupert Murdoch's 20th Century Fox bought out the remaining assets of four-star television from Ronald Perelman's compact video in 1996. Most of four-star television's library of programs are controlled by 20th Century Fox television today. After Murdoch's numerous buyouts during the buyout era of the 80s, News Corporation had built up financial debts of $7 billion, despite the many assets that were held by News Corp. The high levels of debt caused Murdoch to sell many of the American magazine interests he had acquired in the mid-1980s. In 1993, Murdoch's Fox Network took exclusive coverage of the National Football Conference of the National Football League from CBS and increased programming to seven days a week. In 1995, Fox became the object of scrutiny from the Federal Communications Commission, when it was alleged that News Limited's Australian base made Murdoch's ownership of Fox illegal. However, the FCC ruled in Murdoch's favour, stating that his ownership of Fox was in the best interests of the public. That same year, Murdoch announced a deal with MCI Communications to develop a major news website and magazine, The Weekly Standard. Also that year, News Corporation launched the Foxtel Pay television network in Australia in partnership with Telstra. In 1996, Murdoch decided to enter the cable news market with the Fox News Channel, a 24-hour cable news station. Ratings studies released in 2009 showed that the network was responsible for nine of the top ten programs in the cable news category at that time. Rupert Murdoch and Ted Turner are long-standing rivals. In late 2003, Murdoch acquired a 34% stake in Hughes Electronics, the operator of the largest American satellite TV system, Direct TV, from General Motors for $6 billion. His Fox movie studio had global hits with Titanic and Avatar. In 2004, Murdoch announced that he was moving News Corporation headquarters from Adelaide, Australia to the United States. Choosing a U.S. domicile was designed to ensure that American fund managers could purchase shares in the company, since many were deciding not to buy shares in non-U.S. companies. On 20 July 2005, News Corporation bought into Mix Media Incorporated, which held MySpace, Imagine Games Network and other social networking theme websites, for $580 million US dollars, making Murdoch a major player in online media concerns. In June 2011, it sold off MySpace for $35 million US dollars. On the 11th of September 2005, News Corporation announced that it would buy IGN Entertainment for $650 million. In May 2007, Murdoch made a $5 billion offer to purchase Dow Jones & Company. At the time, the Bancroft family, 
who had owned Dow Jones and Company for 105 years and controlled 64% of the shares at the time, declined the offer. Later, the Bancroft family confirmed a willingness to consider a sale. Besides Murdoch, the Associated Press reported that supermarket magnate Ron Burkle and internet entrepreneur Brad Greenspan were among the other interested parties. In 2007, Murdoch acquired Dow Jones and Company, which gave him such publications as the Wall Street Journal, Barron's Magazine, the Far Eastern Economic Review and Smart Money. In June 2014, Murdoch's 21st Century Fox made a bid for Time Warner at $85 per share in stock and cash which Time Warner's board of directors turned down in July. Warner's CNN unit would have been sold to ease antitrust issues of the purchase. On 5 August, 2014 the company announced it had withdrawn its offer for Time Warner, and said it would spend $6 billion buying back its own shares over the following 12 months. Murdoch left his post as CEO of 21st Century Fox in 2015 but continued to own the company until it was purchased by Disney in 2019. A number of television broadcasting assets were spun off into the Fox Corporation before the acquisition and are still owned by Murdoch. This includes Fox News, of which Murdoch was acting CEO from 2016 until 2019, following the resignation of Roger Ailes due to accusations of sexual harassment. Chapter 5 Section 1 – Political Activities in the United States McKnight identifies four characteristics of his media operations, free market ideology, unified positions on matters of public policy, global editorial meetings, and opposition to liberal bias in other public media. In The New Yorker, Ken Oletta writes that Murdoch's support for Edward I. Koch while he was running for mayor of New York spilled over onto the news pages of the Post, with the paper regularly publishing glowing stories about Koch and sometimes savage accounts of his four primary opponents. According to The New York Times, Ronald Reagan's campaign team credited Murdoch and the Post for his victory in New York in the 1980 United States presidential election. Reagan later waived a prohibition against owning a television station and a newspaper in the same market, allowing Murdoch to continue to control the New York Post and the Boston Herald while expanding into television. On 8 May 2006, the Financial Times reported that Murdoch would be hosting a fundraiser for Senator Hillary Clinton's Senate re-election campaign. In a 2008 interview with Walt Morseberg, Murdoch was asked whether he had anything to do with the New York Post's endorsement of Barack Obama in the Democratic primaries. Without hesitating, Murdoch replied, Yeah. He is a rock star. It's fantastic. I love what he is saying about education. I don't think he will win Florida but he will win in Ohio and the election. I am anxious to meet him. I want to see if he will walk the walk. In 2010, News Corporation gave one million US dollars to the Republican Governors Association and one million dollars to the US Chamber of Commerce. Murdoch also served on the board of directors of the Libertarian Cato Institute. Murdoch is also a supporter of the Stop Online Piracy Act and Protect Intellectual Property Act. Murdoch was reported in 2011 as advocating more open immigration policies in Western nations generally. In the United States, Murdoch and chief executives from several major corporations, including Hewlett Packard, Boeing, and Disney, joined New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg to form the Partnership for a New American Economy to advocate for immigration reform including a path to legal status for all illegal aliens now in the United States. The coalition, reflecting Murdoch and Bloomberg's own views, also advocates significant increases in legal immigration to the United States as a means of boosting America's sluggish economy and lowering unemployment. The partnership's immigration policy prescriptions are notably similar to those of the Cato Institute and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, both of which Murdoch has supported in the past. The Wall Street Journal editorial page has similarly advocated for increased legal immigration, in contrast to the staunch anti immigration stance of Murdoch's British newspaper, The Sun. On 5 September 2010, Murdoch testified before the House Subcommittee on Immigration, Citizenship, Refugees, Border Security, 
and international law membership on the role of immigration in strengthening America's economy. In his testimony, Murdoch called for ending mass deportations and endorsed a comprehensive immigration reform plan that would include a pathway to citizenship for all illegal immigrants. In the 2012 U.S. presidential election, Murdoch was critical of the competence of Mitt Romney's team but was nonetheless strongly supportive of a Republican victory, tweeting, Of course I want him to win, save us from socialism, etc. in October 2015. Murdoch stirred controversy when he praised Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson and referenced President Barack Obama, tweeting, Ben and Candy Carson terrific. What about a real black president who can properly address the racial divide? And much else. After which he apologized, tweeting, Apologies. No offense meant. Personally find both men charming. During Donald Trump's term as U.S. President Murdoch showed support for him through the news stories broadcast in his media empire, including on Fox News. In early 2018, Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince and de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia, had an intimate dinner at Murdoch's Bel Air estate in Los Angeles. Murdoch is a strong supporter of Israel and its domestic policies. In October 2010, the Anti-Defamation League in New York City presented Murdoch with its International Leadership Award for his stalwart support of Israel and his commitment to promoting respect and speaking out against anti-Semitism. However, in April 2021, in a letter to Lachlan Murdoch, its director Jonathan Greenblatt wrote that the ADL would no longer make such an award to his father. This was in the immediate context of accusations made by the ADL against Fox News presenter Tucker Carlson, and his apparent espousal of the white replacement theory. Chapter 6, Activities in Europe Murdoch owns a controlling interest in Sky Italia, a satellite television provider in Italy. Murdoch's business interests in Italy have been a source of contention since they began. In 2010 Murdoch won a media dispute with then-Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi. A judge ruled the then Prime Minister's media arm media set prevented News Corporation's Italian unit, Sky Italia, from buying advertisements on its television networks. Chapter 7, Activities in Asia In November 1986, News Corporation purchased a 35% stake in the South China Morning Post Group for about 105 million US dollars. At that time, SCMP Group was a stock-listed company, and was owned by HSBC, Hutchison Wampoa and Dow Jones and Company. In December 1986, Dow Jones and Company offered News Corporation to sell about 19% of share it owned of SCMP for 57.2 million US dollars, and, by 1987, News Corporation completed the full takeover. In September 1993, News Corporation have agreed to sell a 34.9% share in SCMP to Robert Quoke's Kerry Media for US$349 million. In 1994, News Corporation sold the remaining 15.1% share in SCMP to Mui Group, disposing the Hong Kong newspaper. In June 1993, News Corporation attempted to acquire a 22% share in TVB, a terrestrial television broadcaster in Hong Kong for about $237 million, but Murdoch's company gave up, as the Hong Kong government would not relax the regulation regarding foreign ownership of broadcasting companies. In 1993, News Corporation acquired Star TV, a Hong Kong company headed by Richard Lee, from Hutchison Wampoa for $1 billion, and subsequently set up offices for it throughout Asia. The deal enabled News International to broadcast from Hong Kong to India, China, Japan and over 30 other countries in Asia, becoming one of the biggest satellite television networks in the East. However, the deal did not work out as Murdoch had planned, because the Chinese government placed restrictions on it that prevented it from reaching most of China. In 2009, News Corporation reorganized Star, a few of these arrangements were that the original company's operations in East Asia, Southeast Asia and the Middle East were integrated into Fox International channels, and Star India was spun off. Chapter 8, Personal Life Chapter 8 Section 1, Residence 
In 2003 Murdoch bought Rose Harty, an 11-bedroom home on a five-acre waterfront estate in Center Island, New York. In May 2013, he purchased the Moraga Estate, an estate, vineyard and winery in Bel Air, Los Angeles, California. In 2019, Murdoch and his new wife Jerry Hall purchased Homewood, an 18th-century house and estate in the English village of Binfield Heath, some four miles northeast of Reading. In late 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, it was reported that Murdoch and Hall had been isolating in their Binfield Heath home for much of the year. He received his first COVID-19 vaccine in nearby Henley-on-Thames on 16 December. Chapter 8 Section 2 Marriages In 1956, Murdoch married Patricia Booker, a former shop assistant and flight attendant from Melbourne, the couple had their only child, Prudence, in 1958. They divorced in 1967. In 1967, Murdoch married Anna Mann, a Scottish-born cadet journalist working for his Sydney newspaper The Daily Telegraph. In January 1998, three months before the announcement of his separation from Anna, a Roman Catholic, Murdoch was made a Knight Commander of the Order of St. Gregory the Great, a papal honour awarded by Pope John Paul II. While Murdoch would oft attend Mass with Torv, he never converted to Catholicism. Torv and Murdoch had three children, Elizabeth Murdoch, Lachlan Murdoch, and James Murdoch. Murdoch's companies published two novels by his then-wife, Family Business and Coming to Terms, both considered to be vanity publications. They divorced in June 1999. Anna Murdoch received a settlement of 1.2 billion US dollars in assets. On the 25th of June 1999, 17 days after divorcing his second wife, Murdoch, then aged 68, married Chinese born Wendy Deng. She was 30, a recent Yale School of Management graduate, and a newly appointed vice president of his Star TV. Murdoch had two daughters with her. Grace and Chloe. Murdoch has six children in all, and is grandfather to thirteen grandchildren. Near the end of his marriage to Wendy, hearsay concerning a possible link with Chinese intelligence became problematic to their relationship. On 13 June 2013, a News Corporation spokesperson confirmed that Murdoch filed for divorce from Deng in New York City, U.S. according to the spokesman, the marriage had been irretrievably broken for more than six months. Murdoch also ended his long-standing friendship with Tony Blair after suspecting him of having an affair with Deng while they were still married. On the 11th of January 2016, Murdoch announced his engagement to former model Jerry Hall in a notice in the Times newspaper. On the 4th of March 2016, Murdoch, a week short of his 85th birthday, and 59-year-old Hall were married in London, at Spencer House, this is Murdoch's fourth marriage. Chapter 8 Section 3, Children Murdoch has six children. His eldest child, Prudence MacLeod, was appointed on 28 January 2011 to the Board of Times Newspapers Limited, part of News International, which publishes The Times and The Sunday Times. Murdoch's elder son Lachlan, formerly the Deputy Chief Operating Officer at the News Corporation and publisher of the New York Post, was Murdoch's heir apparent before resigning from his executive posts at the Global Media Company at the end of July 2005. Lachlan's departure left James Murdoch, Chief Executive of the satellite television service British Sky Broadcasting since November 2003 as the only Murdoch son still directly involved with the company's operations, though Lachlan has agreed to remain on the News Corporation's board. After graduating from Vassar College and marrying classmate Elkin Kwesi P. in 1993, Murdoch's daughter Elizabeth and her husband purchased a pair of NBC affiliate television stations in California, KSBW and KSBY. With a $35 million loan provided by her father. By quickly reorganizing and reselling them at a $12 million profit in 1995, Elizabeth emerged as an unexpected rival to her brothers for the eventual leadership of the publishing dynasty. But, after divorcing P&M in 1998 and quarreling publicly with her assigned mentor Sam Chisholm at B Sky B, she struck out on her own as a television and film producer in London. 
She has since enjoyed independent success, in conjunction with her second husband, Matthew Freud, the great-grandson of Sigmund Freud, whom she met in 1997 and married in 2001. It is not known how long Murdoch will remain as News Corporation's CEO. For a while the American cable television entrepreneur John Malone was the second-largest voting shareholder in News Corporation after Murdoch himself, potentially undermining the family's control. In 2007, the company announced that it would sell certain assets and give cash to Malone's company in exchange for its stock. In 2007, the company issued Murdoch's older children voting stock. Murdoch has two children with Wendy Deng, Grace and Chloe. It was revealed in September 2011 that Tony Blair is Grace's godfather. There is reported to be tension between Murdoch and his oldest children over the terms of a trust holding the family's 28.5% stake in News Corporation, estimated in 2005 to be worth about $6.1 billion. Under the trust, his children by Wendy Deng share in the proceeds of the stock but have no voting privileges or control of the stock. Voting rights in the stock are divided 50-50 between Murdoch on the one side and his children of his first two marriages. Murdoch's voting privileges are not transferable but will expire upon his death, and the stock will then be controlled solely by his children from the prior marriages, although their half-siblings will continue to derive their share of income from it. It is Murdoch's stated desire to have his children by Deng given a measure of control over the stock proportional to their financial interest in it. It does not appear that he has any strong legal grounds to contest the present arrangement, and both ex-wife Anna and their three children are said to be strongly resistant to any such change. Chapter 9, Portrayal on Television, in Film, Books and Music Murdoch and rival newspaper and publishing magnate Robert Maxwell are thinly fictionalized as Keith Townsend and Richard Armstrong in the Fourth Estate by British novelist and former MP Geoffrey Archer. Murdoch has been portrayed by Barry Humphreys in the 1991 miniseries Selling Hitler, Hugh Laurie in a parody of It's a Wonderful Life in the television show A Bit of Fry and Laurie, Ben Mendelssohn in the film Black and White. Paul Elder in The Late Shift. Himself on The Simpsons, first in Sunday, Cruddy Sunday and later in Judge Me Tender. Patrick Bramall in the two-part miniseries Power Games. Simon McBurney in the 2019 miniseries The Loudest Voice. Malcolm McDowell in Bombshell. Ben Miller in two UK comedy TV series, Tracy Ullman's show and Tracy Breaks the News. It was speculated that the character of Elliot Carver, the global media magnate and main villain in the 1997 James Bond movie Tomorrow Never Dies, is based on Murdoch. The screenwriter of the film, Bruce Feirstein, stated that Carver was actually inspired by British press magnate Robert Maxwell, who was one of Murdoch's rivals. Whenever the Eagles drummer and lead singer Don Henley performs his 1981 hit solo release Dirty Laundry, which directly criticizes what Henley sees as the news industry favoring style and sensationalism over substance and proper journalism, he says that he'd like to dedicate this song to Mr. Rupert Murdoch. In the 1997 film Fierce Creatures, the head of Octopus Incorporated's Rod McCain character is likely modeled after Murdoch. In 1999, the Ted Turner-owned TBS channel aired an original sitcom, The Chimp Channel. This featured an all-simian cast and the role of an Australian TV veteran named Harry Waller. The character is described as a self-made gazillionaire with business interests in all sorts of fields. He owns newspapers, hotel chains, sports franchises and genetic technologies, as well as everyone's favorite cable TV channel, The Chimp Channel. Waller is thought to be a parody of Murdoch, a longtime rival of Turner. In 2004, the movie Outfoxed included many interviews accusing Fox News of pressuring reporters to report only one side of news stories, in order to influence viewers' political opinions. In 2012, the satirical show Hacks, broadcast on the UK's Channel 4, made obvious comparisons with Murdoch using the fictional character Stanhope Feast, portrayed by Michael Kitchen as well as other central figures in the phone hacking scandal. The 2013 film Anchorman 2, 
The legend continues features an Australian character inspired by Rupert Murdoch who owns a cable news television channel. In the novel Dunbar by Edward St. Aubin the eponymous lead character is at least partly inspired by Murdoch. Murdoch was part of the inspiration for Logan Roy, the protagonist of TV show Succession. Who is portrayed by Brian Cox. Murdoch is played by Malcolm McDowell in the 2019 film Bombshell. Chapter 10 Influence, Wealth and Reputation. According to Forbes' real time list of world's billionaires, Murdoch is the 34th richest person in the US and the 96th richest person in the world, with a net worth of 13.1 billion US dollars as of February 2017. In 2016, Forbes ranked Rupert Murdoch and family as the 35th most powerful person in the world. Later, in 2019, Rupert Murdoch and family were ranked 52nd in the Forbes annual list of the world's billionaires. In August 2013, Terry Flew, professor of media and communications at Queensland University of Technology, wrote an article for the Conversation publication in which he investigated a claim by former Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd that Murdoch owned 70% of Australian newspapers in 2011. Flew's article showed that News Corp Australia owned 23% of the nation's newspapers in 2011, according to the Finkelstein Review of Media and Media Regulation, but, at the time of the article, the corporation's titles accounted for 59% of the sales of all daily newspapers, with weekly sales of 17.3 million copies. In connection with Murdoch's testimony to the Leveson inquiry into the ethics of the British press, editor of Newsweek International, Tunku Varadare Jean, referred to him as the man whose name is synonymous with unethical newspapers. News Corp papers were accused of supporting the campaign of the Australian Liberal government and influencing public opinion during the 2013 federal election. Following the announcement of the Liberal Party victory at the polls, Murdoch tweeted Aust. Election public sick of public sector workers and phony welfare scroungers, sucking life out of economy. Other nations to follow in time. In November 2015, Former Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott said that Murdoch arguably has had more impact on the wider world than any other living Australian. In late 2015, the Wall Street Journal journalist John Carreyrou began a series of investigative articles on Theranos, the blood testing startup founded by Elizabeth Holmes, that questioned its claim to be able to run a wide range of lab tests from a tiny sample of blood from a finger prick. Holmes had turned to Murdoch whose media empire includes Carreyrou's employer, the Wall Street Journal, to kill the story. Murdoch, who became the biggest investor in Theranos in 2015 as a result of his $125 million injection, refused the request from Holmes saying that he trusted the paper's editors to handle the matter fairly. Chapter 10 Section 1, Hard Copy Chenoweth, Neil. Rupert Murdoch, the Untold Story of the World's Greatest Media Wizard. New York, Random House. Dover, Bruce. Rupert's Adventures in China, How Murdoch Lost a Fortune and Found a Wife. Ellison, Sarah. War at the Wall Street Journal, Inside the Struggle to Control an American Business Empire, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, 2010. ISBN 978-0547-15243-1. Evans, Harold. Good Times, Bad Times, London, Weidenfeld and Nicholson, 1983. Harcourt, Allison. European Union Institutions and the Regulation of Media Markets. London, New York, Manchester University Press. ISBN 0-7196644-1. McKnight, David. Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation, a media institution with a mission, Historical Journal of Film, Radio, and Television, Sept. 2010, Volume 30 Issue 3, pages 303-316. Munster, George. A Paper Prince. Ringwood Vic, Australia, Penguin Books Australia Limited ISBN 0670 Page, Bruce. 
The Murdoch Archipelago. Simon and Schuster UK. Shawcross, William. Murdoch, The Making of a Media Empire. New York, Simon and Schuster. Sushu, Yao. House of Glass, Culture, Modernity, and the State in Southeast Asia. Bangkok, White Lotus. Chapter 10 Section 2, Online. Equals Chapter 10 Section 2 Subsection 2 Individual Items. Profile archived May 2012 at Forbes. Arsenault, A., and Castells, M. Rupert Murdoch and the Global Business of Media Politics. International Sociology. 23. Cook, Richard. The Endless Reign of Rupert Murdoch, After Decades of Influence, the media mogul isn't so much a person as an epoch. The Monthly.